I think a lot of times we understand, oh, you know, credible, don't go to Twitter for credible information, but understanding really how money and time plays an impact in this is important for us to understand why our professors direct us to the library. So the second thing here that I wanted to take a look at is called the credibility clock. <clears throat> and I wanted us to just get a different perspective on this because um, time plays a big role in how information has um, credibility and reputation attached to it. So you can kind of see that in this illustration, um, different minute segments of the clock represent how much time it takes to create the information and also how much time it takes to consume the information. So at a really basic level, think about how long it takes for you to read a tweet from something like the CDC with just really high level information. And then <clears throat> go and think about how long would it take you to go in and read that international peer reviewed study that that tweet is referencing. So it's not to say that we can't find good information across this spectrum, but this is providing us with some guideposts to really look and see, hey, you know, we're trying to get away from finding things just in general off the World Wide Web through these media platforms, sometimes Google included, and taking a look at seeing how time plays into this. So for instance, it doesn't take any time at all, really, to, um, craft a tweet or to retweet something or to share a post or to post something to Reddit or in, to engage with a community. Um, it does take a bit more time to formulate your thoughts and to do a YouTube video or to share your information through a podcast. We start to get into a little bit of the realm of professional media creation. And it also starts to take more time to engage with that media. It takes time to watch a 15 minute YouTube essay that someone has done. Um, we also see that when we're listening to news broadcasts or when we're listening to radio programs or even podcasts that talk about um, academic or research oriented topics, it takes time to create those and time to consume those items. So then in this 15 minute segment, I kind of talk about how we're getting into the realm of documentaries and investigative reports. Um, we're talking about like C-SPAN, which will have literally just live streaming Congress, which can be so mind-numbingly boring, but also it's like the primary source for what's going on legislatively. Um, and then we're getting into things like New York Times, New Yorker, Wall Street Journal. Um, these are the kind of items that we're looking at here. So if we're connecting this back to the spectrum of credibility, this is more like the more credible side. And if we reverse our timestamp, this is more the less credible. And so the most credible side takes place in this 30 minute zone where we can see that this is the most credible. This is where peer reviewed articles live. This is where it takes a lot of time and collaboration and energy to create this peer reviewed scholarly material. Um, so I'm representing that with the articles. I'm representing it with books. Uh, this here is a symbol for database. So we'll see that a lot of this is made available in databases. And then we're also going to see how um, these studies can hit international uh, collaborations. Okay, so those are a couple of ideas that I just wanted to float out there, the spectrum of credibility and the credibility clock, help us understand how money and time um, influence the information that we're looking at and how libraries can help you save time and also save money and act as that central area where you can come in and find almost exactly what you need for your assignments here. <clears throat>